There wasn't a newspaper. Forget a television. Forget what we know today that the whole world can be live just on their iPhone. It says travel will increase. Do you think about this? Just a hundred years ago, do you realize people were still walking and on horses? The car was invented by then, but it wasn't popular. Up to the early 1900s, people are walking. That's why most towns are 20 miles apart. You know why? Because if you were healthy, that's about how far you could walk in a day. So most towns are 20 miles apart. Well, you got a horse, you can, you can hit a few towns. That's why I think about knowledge. You know how knowledge used to be acquired? The dad would teach his kids everything that he knew. Maybe they'd read a couple of books. You know, they'd improve on the belt buckle and a horse saddle. Make the, you know, knife a little sharper. The whatever they used to bale the hay, make that a little bit better. That's it. It's a whole different day right now. Talking about travel. So it used to, people could travel like 20 miles in a day. Do you know right now, as I'm speaking, there are over 7,000 airplanes in the air right now. Yes, pray for the air traffic controllers. Virgin Atlantic, the, the, the Branson guy, I mean, he's coming out with that plane where space travel now, you know what he's going to offer? You can go around the world in two and a half hours. Two and a half hours around the world. It used to take us 24 hours to go 20 miles. God knew it. He says it right there in Daniel. Increase of knowledge and travel. But here's the big one. You could say, well, Stovall, that's kind of, you know, been amping up there. And, you know, it's just kind of getting more and more. Remember this, when Jesus is talking about all these things and he's talking about, you know, wars and rumors of wars and famines and earthquakes and all that kind of stuff. Remember, he says that these are the signs of the labor pains. Do I have any women in here who've given birth to a baby or few? What happens when you get that first labor pain? You know, when you get that first, uh, what do you do? Your husband's next to you, you get your elbow up here and you go, uh, you better get me to a hospital and put that epidural in me. No offense to the natural birthers. But you're like, you better get there. I better get to the hospital and, and, and get to feeling better. Why? Because here's what that mama knows. Those pains are going to get worse and they're going to get more frequent. So what happens is you have a labor pain, you go for a while, and then you finally get another. But the closer it is for that baby coming out, those labor pains get more intense and they get more frequent. Just Google. Google, uh, you know, history of earthquakes, hurricanes, all those things. Go Google that stuff if you want. See how the patterns are over, just take for the last few hundred years. You'll see those things. Guess what? They get, they get closer, they get more intense. They're pains. They're just a sign. Every generation have, has seen that sign. But there's only one generation that I think can see all of the signs, and it has to do with this one right here, because until, until this sign happened, so much of Bible prophecy could not come to pass. Here is the big, in my interpretation, this is the prophetic super sign that started the end time clock. This is, in my opinion, when Jesus said, when you see that fig tree's bud like that, you know that summer is near. This is what I believe that budding was. Right here, number three. The restoration of the nation of Israel for the second time in one day. Until Israel was a recognized nation. Armageddon is about Israel. I'm about to read you all these prophecies. We'll get into some next. It's all about Israel as a nation. Israel was not recognized as a nation until May 14th, 1948. When, for, despite huge opposition from all of the Middle Eastern countries all around them, huge, totally outnumbering them in that re region. The UN voted in one day to make Israel a nation. Are you ready for th this? God not only prophesied that, he said it would happen a second time. Do you know how hard it is for a nation to be born in a day twice? Because if you remember this, the first time, remember Babylon, uh, Babylonia took Israel and Judah captive in 445 BC, they were let go. They were allowed to go back and become a nation again. That was the first time they became a nation in a day. Then after Jesus in 70 AD, that's when the Romans came in. 
They destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple. They burned everything to the ground. The Jews were scattered again until guess when? 1948. May 14th, 1948, and God said that this would happen. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11 says, it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. Everybody say the second time. Second time to recover the remnant of his people who are left from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Cush, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, the islands of the sea. Look, he will set up a banner for the nations and will assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. For a second time, Isaiah 66, verse 8, who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen things like this? Or shall a nation be born at once? Or shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she gave birth to her children. The nation of Israel becoming recognized as a state, as a nation in May 14th, 1948. That is why that sign had not be, uh, that sign was not there or could not be seen and was not seen by any generation since the resurrection of Christ until now. So when every generation, oh, when you hear people saying, oh yeah, well, you know, Jesus could have come back and you know, the church has been saying that forever. We've always been in the last days, but until 1948, no. In my opinion, prophetically, Christ couldn't return. That's why, don't you realize, that, 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 that's why Satan, he's always trying to wipe out the Jews. You ever want to know what's the deal with the Jews? Why is everybody trying to kill them? Why is everybody trying to wipe them out? Because Satan knows that's who Jesus comes back for at the end of the tribulation. There can be no rule and reign of Christ without a Jewish nation, without a Jewish remnant. He cannot set up his millennial reign. And Satan, since the dawn, uh, since the resurrection of Jesus, has tried to exterminate the Jewish people. So if Jesus says the generation that sees this happen, if this is one of the end time signs, he says this generation that sees this, this generation, I'm telling you, it won't pass away until all these things take place, until the Son of Man returns. So, so now the question is this, how long is a generation? How many of you want to know that, how long the Bible says that a generation is? Like two of y'all, okay, rest of y'all are lying. All right, so listen. There's four numbers in the Bible that it refers to a generation. Okay, first is 40, you know, like the children of Israel, you know, 40 years, and that generation. First one is 40. And that's why some yo-yo wrote some book, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Coming Back in 1988. Because he just went 40 years from when Israel became a nation, from 48 to 88. And he made $8.8 .8 million and then got up on January 1st, 1989 and said, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know if he made that much money, but he made a lot. But 40, if you look in the Bible, okay, so there's 40 years, but look, Psalm 9010, it says the days of our lives are 70 years, and if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. So here's an, uh, a word for genera uh, number for generation, 70 years, 80 years. So I'm just saying, if it was 70 years, that would be what, 20, 2018. Consumer math, bro. <laughs> see all that, see all that trigonometry, advanced algebra? Did you see, I ask you a simple question? You can't do it. Y'all have to have been here for a while at Celebration to know my consumer math story in college. I made an A. <laughs> so if it's 70 years, it's 2018. If it's 80 years, it's what, 2028? 20, but Jesus is likened in the context of the scripture is what? Just as it was in the days of Noah. Remember the similarities. There was the judgment of water. There was a judgment. There's a coming judgment. There's all these similarities. Well, it just so happens that in Genesis chapter 6, 3, when God is talking about the judgment that he's giving, he says, man's days shall be no more than 120 years. So if you take the 120 years, that's 2,068. So where does that leave us? No one knows the day or the hour. You just need to be ready. 
And I'm not saying that he has to come back by 2068. Maybe, you know, somebody will see something else in the scriptures and there's some kind of number for a generation of a nation that's 250 years. All I'm telling you is this. When Israel became a nation, that prophetic super sign, that set the clock in motion, in my opinion. And that means that we are in the end. Is it 70 years, 80 years, 120 years, 200 years? I don't know. But we need to be ready. A couple other things that happened with this. First of all, the restoration of the Hebrew language. Jeremiah 31, 23. God says, again, I will bring back speech into the land of Judah. Use this speech in the land of Judah and in its cities when I bring them back from captivity. Zephaniah 3, 9. For then I will restore to the peoples a pure language that they may call on the name of the Lord. Did you know that Hebrew, the Hebrew language spoken and publicly written, it was basically extinct for almost 2,000 years? And there was a man by the name of Eleazar ben Yehuda who felt like God had called him to reteach the Hebrew language. And so when Jews started coming back into Israel, he began to hold classes. He wrote a dictionary. He got the alphabet revived and all that. Do you know that right now that Hebrew, Hebrew is the main language spoken in Israel? All the street signs, all the mileage signs, all the, all the public books, they're all written in Hebrew. If you understand linguistics, you understand a, a language has never been dead for more than 70 or 100 years and ever been back. Hebrew was dead for 2,000 years, and now it's the most common language in Israel. That is a huge miracle. Thank you, all three of y'all. Okay, so, yes, yes, okay. Number four, number four, I gotta hurry here, ready? Number four, Jerusalem, you'll know this one, Jerusalem will be an impossible political problem for the entire world. Duh, right? You want to know why every time you turn on the news, there it is about Jerusalem and this war and that war and bombing this and bombing that? God said it, Zechariah chapter 12. Look at verse 2. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they laid siege against, siege against Jeru Judah and Jerusalem. He says it will happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all the peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all the nations of the earth are gathered against it. 